What's up, YouTube? Today I thought I'd take you along with uh, one of my stringer assignments. And a stringer is someone who goes out and collects video freelance for a media company. And I use an app called Stringer that gives me assignments. One of the assignments this weekend was to go down and take video near the Georgia Capitol as there had been some reports of potential violence or at least protest by Trump supporters at state capitals around the country. And so I came down to video document and submit my videos and I get a little paid for submitting my videos in and if they get chosen and uh, accepted. And uh, I thought I'd just take you through the process of what I do and this is going to be an uninterrupted flow and you can see I'm unpacking my camera and setting up my tripod now and you'll see how I set up what my process is how I maneuver around and I'll, you'll even see over in the corner with picture in picture I'll show you the uh, video that I captured with my camera now some equipment notes the and primary video that you're watching right now is captured on a GoPro Hero 7 on a chest mount. And the camera that I'm using for my stringer activities is an old Canon Rebel T6i. Not a very expensive one, and I'm using the two kit lenses that came with it. The only two accessories added to that are a rather cheap tripod and a circular filter for the lenses so that I can dial in my exposure without having to mess with camera settings and it just makes my workflow faster and as you'll see throughout the video I swap that filter from one lens to another which pretty much just points out that I need two filters so that I can put half of them on each lens and I've actually got a third lens that the filter doesn't even fit so I need to get one for it but as you can see it doesn't really take a whole lot of equipment to do the stringer thing it's an old cheap camera 1080p is all it can handle but the main thing you're trying to do is capture the story and the story of today turned out to be that there were no protesters but the Georgia State Patrol and National Guard were there and prepared and so to tell that story I need to capture lots of military police and Georgia State Patrol standing around basically and here's my first shot not anything special but it's just me capturing that they have blocked off the streets with these heavy trucks and so the two things I'm trying to portray with my shots are that they were very prepared and nothing happened. And so basically here I go, I've taken my first shot, now I'm gonna work my way down to get some closer shots. And you'll see I change lenses occasionally, but most of the time I'm just gonna run around and set up, get my shots. Now what you have to do as a stringer is you need to set up on a tripod so they get a nice, smooth, steady shot when possible. Sometimes you need to run and gun, and you'll, you'll see some of that. And there are other cameras that are better for that with built-in gimbals and things like that. But there wasn't much running necessary this time, so I just set up my tripod. And you get 30 seconds at a time, so that's why you see these shots take so long. I'll start this one, and I'll let it run for 30 seconds once I get the camera set up here. And in case you're wondering what those countdowns that kept happening are, I don't want to walk in front of you. Yeah. Those are the crosswalks, and they read out the countdown so that visually impaired people will know when to safely cross. Although, in this climate and atmosphere, especially after what happened in Nashville, hearing timers counting down is a little disconcerting.
And in case you're wondering why I keep tapping on the screen, that's how I set the focus on this particular Canon. And the reason I'm using my old Canon instead of one of my cinema cameras is because the Canon has very quick autofocus and it's very fast for the type of shooting that I'm doing. I didn't really have time to set up to pull focus manually and and all that, even though I could have gotten a lot larger, better image with my 6K Blackmagic camera. Also, these 1080 shots are much, much smaller. And we're talking about, you need to turn this stuff around. I had to come straight home from this gig and get those videos uploading as soon as possible because this is news. Timeliness is necessary. Another thing to keep in mind is you want multiple shots from the, of the same activity sometimes. Like you can see, I've got a, a wide angle shot here and I'll let it run for 30 seconds. And then for, all I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit, <clears throat> reframe a little bit, tap to refocus and record another 30 seconds, same to the same spot. Now the request here was for two days of shooting and this is the second day this is sunday the 17th on the 16th i had already been down to this location and this is actually not my first time shooting at this location but i had been down there the day before so i was able to find where they were going to be set up and i was able to use that reconnaissance to to expedite my shot selection and i knew a path I needed to walk around the capital to find which angles I needed to grab, which shots I needed to get. And as you can see, I'll pass a lot of other photographers, and that ended up becoming another part of the story. All right, a lot more people today, at least press and... The whole army of journalists. I think we can yeah. take the Trumpsters if they Yeah, <laughs> that's what it looks like. <laughs> As you could hear in that conversation, we had, <laughs> we both were laughing about that there was more media at, and, than Trump supporters, which I, I don't think I saw any. I saw two people walk by that had uh, American flags hanging out of, of their backpacks a little bit. That doesn't necessarily mean that they were Trump supporters or anything. They were there to protest, but they looked like they were walking around looking for something and it was not materializing. Nobody showed up. But the other story was that there was a lot of press. So once I make my way around the Capitol, there's an area where there were a lot of press. And I shot some video of the press shooting video because that kind of became part of the story. You always have to remember that this is about the story. You know, there's some eye candy. You're trying to get some good shots and you follow your basic guidelines to get proper exposure and good framing and things like that. But you can't be dishonest. You can't frame something out that you that's integral to the story. So I'm trying to tell the story. The first thing you have to do is come down and decide what is the story. And like I talked about, the story today is that there was a lot of preparation. No protesters showed up. And then the side story was that there was a lot of press. And so these are the things I try to convey with the videos that I shoot. Now, obviously, these 30 second long videos don't make it into the news. They take little snippets of each one, but you want 30 seconds. So there's plenty of tail on both sides that they can trim and edit. And if you also notice, I'm shooting in a flat profile. That just means that I've got lower contrast and lower saturation so that I can capture more details in the shadows without blowing out the highlights. And the news team who puts together their final video to put on television will do any color correction that they feel necessary to make it fit with their other footage.
here you can see I'm just refocusing and getting a different zoom shot. I think this shot really shows the heavily prepared and incredibly bored military police from the National Guard. Okay, in this upcoming shot, I chose this shot because there was military police and Georgia State Patrol together, and you had the flags in the background. And those flags are from Liberty Plaza across the street from the Capitol. And the building in the background is actually, uh, I think it's the Nathan Deal. It, it's a government building, but it's not actually part of the Capitol. Because I've zoomed in so far, you get some background compression that brings that background up. And I'm not going to get into a tutorial about long lenses and background compression, but just suffice it to say that when you zoom in on something, you bring the background up to people and it compresses it, and you'll get some size anomalies if you're not careful. Now coming up here, I'm getting set up basically just for another shot on these guys. You'll notice this shot is real short and I only included it because I noticed something else going on and I cut the shot short to go turn around and grab this shot. So I'm getting a shot of these guys standing around again, you know, multiple angles of the same thing. But then I notice, hey, there's a guy coming over here. He's setting up a flag on the barrier. And I'm thinking, okay, something is about to happen, or at least this is something interesting going on. I don't think this guy was a Trump supporter. I'm not sure what he's doing. He sets this, like, peace symbol, you know, the, the two fingers up peace symbol. It looked like a, a large paperweight that he set in the middle. Then he set his backpack on the corner of it and stepped back to take a picture. Now, when he set the backpack down, Myself and some of the military police and state patrols started to get a little concerned <laughs> because, you know, we weren't sure what the backpack was. But it looks like he was just using it to help weigh down the flag against the wind, which there was some considerable wind, as I'm sure you've heard. And he was just taking a picture. And, and actually, this guy kind of walked all around and kept doing the same thing, setting up his flag and taking these pictures. Not sure what he was doing, you know, but uh, he maybe it's art, maybe it's some sort of protest. Either way, uh, he wasn't doing any harm, but, you know, it was something interesting. Uh, so I stopped my original video and pointed at him. And so I started getting all the angles and shots that I could. And this guy doesn't seem to be following proper flag etiquette. Uh, as he just kind of half folds and then rolls up the flag, stuffs it in his backpack like it's a blanket. But to each his own, I suppose. Now you'll see I set back up for the original shot that I was getting before I noticed the flag guy. This 
it's funny how some people will try not to get in your shot and other people just don't care and they'll walk right in front of it. In fact, on the day before, I had been walking towards a shot. There was a, actually CNN. I recognized the, the uh, on-air broadcaster. She was doing a probably a live feed and one of the producers or assistants was standing next to him and they saw me and they were waving frantically don't walk into our shot don't walk into our shot and I saw what they were doing but being the mischievous person that I am I pretended like I didn't see him and kept walking towards their shot knowing that I was going to cross the street at the crosswalk before I got into their shot but I didn't get in their shot and I walked up over and set up across the street to get my shot and as soon as they finished doing their thing they walked right across into my shot. <laughs> so I don't, you know, you never can tell. The people. But here's where I walk over and I start to get in a little bit of a hassle with the Georgia State Patrol because I'm kind of set up in the crosswalk trying to get a shot on this. They, they've, we've got a, an armored personnel carrier with some military police from National Guard set up right in front of a Martin Luther King statue, which I thought was a nice juxtaposition and kind of said some poignant things about the activities of the of the day. And as I was doing so, one officer is coming around the building and starts yelling at me, I gotta move to the sidewalk. I can't really hear him at first because I'm standing next to a idling dump truck and it's very loud. But before that, I get this shot of the person in the armored personnel carrier. And it looks like she's having a good time chatting and joking with the officers there. So I kind of thought the lighthearted moment was good, considering the blinking lights in front of her and the seriousness of the situation. It kind of showed some of the relaxedness of the, the guard because nobody showed up and there wasn't anything to do. Okay, here's where I'm setting up to try to get this shot of the APC in front of the MLK statue. <clears throat> and it's, since I am not, you know, even though this street is closed off and there's no way I'm in any danger or blocking any traffic or anything, <laughs> the little state patrol did not like me standing where I was standing. And so you'll see what happens. Over here? This? Oh, gotcha. His thick rural accent made it a little difficult to understand what he was saying at first, too. I had had a run-in with the Georgia State Martin Patrol the day before. Walk sign is on the cross, Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. More about that incident in a little bit. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Walk sign is on the cross, Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Walk sign is on the cross, Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Walk sign is on the cross. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. That's Flagman, by the way. Walk sign is on the cross. Martin He's bringing Luther acid wash jeans Drive. back. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. 12, 11, 10, 9, <laughs> 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Avenue. Walk signs on the cross, Piedmont Avenue. Piedmont Avenue. 
Those countdowns are a little disconcerting in this atmosphere. <laughs> Hearing these countdowns yeah. over and over is a little. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Here I just keep setting up to get a better angle of the same shot. I thought it was an important shot and I wanted to make sure that I got every possible angle. You can't always tell what's going on on the little bitty screen. And like I said, this is a lightweight run and gun operation so I didn't have any external monitors plugged in like I would normally do when I'm set up to do a, you know, like a mini documentary interview or something. And yes, the countdowns always being in the background somewhere just lended an air of eeriness to the whole thing. And here we go with the lens change routine. See, I have to swap the lenses, and then I have to take off the filter here. <clears throat> and this isn't easy because it's cold, my hands are cold, I can't seem to get the thing to go. But there it is. And it's on, and now I can move on and get the next shot with a wider angle. The two lenses I'm using, the shorter lens is an 18 to 55 millimeter. The longer lens is a 55 to 250. Neither one of them are anything special. They're just the kit lenses that came with my little Rebel back when I first got into photography. <laughs> so. I just added a 10 millimeter to 18 millimeter wide angle lens to my setup but I don't have a ND filter to use with it so uh, I didn't even break that one out when I needed a wider angle I just backed up Here we're gonna get one more angle of this shot, or one more. Is this one the zoomed in one? A little bit more zoomed in, but with the shorter lens. One day in the future, I might start carrying a second camera as a still camera so that while my 30 second shot is running, I can snap off a couple of uh, still shots as well. That, that's a future investment. Here, here's where I'm being nice and I go around behind this woman getting her shot. And I think she's from AP because I've seen those shots actually on television. I'm always looking to see if I can ever find a shot that I did on television and identify it, but a lot of times there's so many other cameras, you never really know, is that my shot or did somebody come and stand in the same spot two minutes after I did? You never know. Or two minutes before I did.
And while I'm waiting on a 30 second shot to go by, I'm looking around for other angles or other things that might be interesting to shoot. So in this shot, in the bottom corner, you can notice there's a group of Georgia State Patrol just standing around and talking. And uh, so that, that looked like part of the story. And there's also a guy that I can see who's standing around with a rubber bullet gun that's easily identifiable because it's bright yellow. And this is just another angle of that last shot where I just widen out a little bit. But next I'm gonna change lenses again so I can zoom in on this guy carrying the pellet gun. And you'll notice that I make a mistake. I, I overexpose the shot and the yellow is just blown out and it, and it looks white and it's, it's, a, it's a bad shot. It's just on me, I made a bad shot. Now on this shot you can see it's properly exposed and the yellow shows up more on the gun but it is a wider shot but it seems like the state patrol realizes that I've got the shot right now so he walks out of it and while I'm setting up for this shot to get the close-up of the state patrol standing around in a corner I'm starting to notice there's a lot of press off to my right and thinking, okay, the press being here is probably part of the story also since they're, they vastly outnumber the protesters. So I said, I'll, I'll get a few shots of them. But first I'm getting the shot of these guys standing around because that also tells the story. You always have to f remember that you're telling a story. You're not inventing a story, but you need to make sure that your shots tell what's going on you know a shot of a police cruiser parked in front of the Capitol doesn't tell you as much as a shot of the police themselves standing around obviously not having to do anything so you look for ways to tell your story and here's where I'm looking at this press down here on the corner and thinking well this is telling the story there's a lot of press who are standing around bored just as bored as the police. And that's the story of the day. Had people shown up, then obviously that would have been the story. Protesters show up and I'd have all this footage of protesters. If they got violent, there might be some dramatic footage. Fortunately, they didn't show up. There was no violence and everything was peaceful. And I was able to go down and make a few bucks by just shooting what was happening, which was nothing. But the preparedness for it and showing the expectation that something was gonna happen was important to tell the story of the day.
And here this guy's walking by giving me lens envy with that really nice super telephoto lens he's got on. I've bought cars that cost less than that lens. I like trying to include street name shots. Sorry, I should say I like including street names in my shots because that gives a sense of location and some context around it. And that's important as well. This shot here captures the unarmed, uh, unmanned camera and the police behind them with nobody needing to do anything because once again nobody showed up which was the story it's always about the story even when you're shooting narrative work it's about the story you're trying to tell a story and so a lot of us get so wrapped up in making the perfect image that that we forget that it's all about the story That guy was nice enough to duck under my shot. I don't think it was necessary though, because I was zoomed in so far that he couldn't have got in my shot if he tried. And once again, we're getting a close up and a wide. As you can see, there's a good bit of walking involved in this job. <clears throat> Over here is where I had a little bit of trouble the day before, on the Saturday before this video. There's this little alley that I'm pointing at over here, or about to point to, <clears throat> where you can see there's a Georgia State Patrol SWAT vehicle parked out front. Now I had been getting video of that the day before, and then I had walked on down to this staging area where they had some buses and, and military police vehicles. I shot some video down there, then I, on my way back up, I had come up that same side road. Well, the entrance to that side road from this side is blocked off by a fence, but on the other side, there was nothing blocking it off at all. So I just walked on up and then found myself inside the forbidden zone. You can see the wind is blowing pretty good. So I'm gonna pick up my strap and hold it so that it doesn't act as a sail and vibrate the camera on these long shots that will soften your focus, especially if the autofocus is on. But these were another group of cops standing around, also telling the story that nothing is happening. But back to my little issue I had with the State Patrol coming up that 
that road, like I said, there was nothing blocking it off. There was no indication that I couldn't walk up there. But once I had gotten up there, I was on the other side of that fence and barrier somehow. Although I had crossed no barrier. Which to me seems like a pretty gaping security hole. And I actually, in this video, you'll see me relaying that to one of the Capitol Police. But, uh, yeah, it, it became an issue. And, you know, it's you know, a little bit of running with the police is expected in this job because you're not usually doing video of fun things, <laughs> you know, peaceful things. You know, they want you to come out and shoot video of when things might get silly. And so here's what you end up shooting and sometimes the police don't like you shooting and you just have to you know, I, I'm respectful for the, with the police. I'm not like one of these auditors that get all up in their face and refuse to give ID or anything like that. But you do have to make sure that they know that you are allowed to be where you're allowed to be. And that if you can see it from public, it can be filmed from public. And there's no law against filming anything that you can see from standing in the, on the sidewalk. But, you know, don't be one of those guys that get all up in their face and just refuse to give your name or ID and all that, you know, even though you don't really have to all the time, you know, I get that. Doesn't mean that you have to be a jerk. I, you know, I, if you play nice with the guys, then you know, you'll get a little bit further. But, you know, Georgia State Patrol, you can play nice with them all you want to. And they're still going to be jerks almost all the time. So that's just that's just the nature of the Georgia State Patrol. At this point, I'm just showing to shoot down and show where the road has been blocked off by yet more heavy trucks. And so I'm zooming down there, and actually my intention is to go up on the other side of the road and shoot back, showing those blockades with the capital in the background. But you'll see I run into some angle issues. I'm on the wrong side of the road, and then when I get on the right side of the road, I still can't see what I want to see. So I end up over there into that building you see off in the distance there. I end up in front of it shooting back to capture it. And if you notice coming across the street here, that's Flagman again. And as I'm walking past down here, I have a, a brief friendly chat with the Department of Public Safety officer until he notices somebody on a bicycle he can harass and he cuts me short and runs up to bother them. How's it going? Looks peaceful so far, right? I ain't even got started yet. Yeah. I haven't seen the first protest yet. Yeah, I, I see a couple of flags, but then you never know what side that's coming from. So. That's right, excuse me if you will. Oh, sure, man. He had to go up there and harass the bicyclist who was riding on the sidewalk. <laughs> Which, yes, I know you're not supposed to ride on the sidewalk, but, you know, come on. There wasn't anybody on the sidewalk but me and that officer. Did I mention there's a lot of walking in this job? And here I start realizing that I walked across the street and I really needed to be back on that other side. Because the angle I end up getting, I can't see the capital from this side of the street. Matter of fact, I can't really even see it from the other side of the street, so I end up in the concrete 
area in front of that building you're looking at now. And if you notice, that's the building that was showing up behind the flags in that shot with the with the armor personnel carrier and the state patrol standing there. And that's how much compression you get when you zoom in. And that was probably zoomed in close to the full 250 millimeters on that lens. Now, of course, I am shooting from a chest mounted GoPro that's in super view mode. So it's the extreme wide angle. I'm not sure what the lens equivalent, but I would guess something like four or five millimeters the way it shows up. But in reality, it's probably closer to 10. But either way, it's just an ex super extreme wide angle and it makes things look a lot further away than they really are. Is obviously my tripod is not as long as it appears sometimes when it shows up while I'm carrying it. And all of this walking, I'm trying to capture the dump trucks and the the road blockade basically and the capital in the same shot and I've still got my long lens on and I can't get back far enough to get the shot I even get back up here on this concrete pad in front of this building and I still end up having to change lenses <laughs> so all that effort to try to not have to change lenses ends up uh, backfiring Well, not backfiring, but being useless. And this is when I decide, yep, got to change lenses. So off comes the ND filter, swap it onto the shorter lens, try not to drop it on the concrete and smash it. It's really cold, my hands are really dry, it's hard to hold on to the stuff. see and hear how the wind is whipping. The day before I was standing there, it was started snowing on me. So. Once again, holding the strap up so that the wind doesn't catch it like a sail and vibrate the camera. Here's where the previous day came in handy, as I knew that down here in this field they had staged some vehicles yesterday. And so I'm going to walk on down and see if they've staged the same vehicles or if there were different vehicles. And here's some of the ones that were there yesterday. 
And so I knew they would have something down there. Like I said, a lot of this gig is walking. <laughs> now you can see they've actually got more buses, but the Department of Public Safety vehicles have been moved out. This time, instead of just the one bus, they've got four. <clears throat> and these are Department of Corrections, Georgia Department, the Georgia Department of Corrections inmate transport vehicles. These have armored sides and as they were prepared to arrest a lot of people. That is part of the story. And so I need to capture that by making sure that <clears throat> I show the military vehicles next to the buses and show that they're from the Georgia Department of Corrections in the shot. A wide angle first, because you gotta show the context. In narrative work, it would be an establishing shot. The wide angle that shows, here's the scene. And then you start getting into the over the shoulders and the close-ups. here we go changing lenses again sometimes you can't get up close enough to even get the wide shot you want without getting too close to guys with guns who are looking for somebody to get too close Now you can clearly see Department of Corrections on the side of that bus. <clears throat> well, at least you can see that on a large screen. If you're watching this on your phone, maybe not. thing to remember is to get multiple angles multiple shots because a lot of times this is the kind of video that will be playing in the background while a panel discussion of the event is going on and rather than having these singles long shots they'll cut from angle to angle to keep it more visually interesting And whenever you can capture somebody walking in the shot, that makes the shot itself more compelling than just a shot that you can barely tell it's not a photograph. And the only way you can tell that is maybe by some sound or reflections or, you know, maybe some wind blowing things or something. <laughs> it's much better if you can capture people in the shot moving around. That's much more interesting to the eye. And so we've got our shots from down here, and now we start to walk. 
and much more walking ahead. And I've got one more long shot I'm gonna grab from the sidewalk up here. That's more of a, what they call a beauty shot that just shows the capital. It's random. It actually could be from any day, but the cloud cover gives away what day it is if you don't have it with the same sun angle and all that kind of thing. So, you know, we go in, we get the beauty shots. Uh, again, these are establishing shots from the narrative world, but this is the news, so we're just getting context shots. And I can't overstress having a ball head tripod because a traditional video tripod isn't going to allow you this quick motion that you need to be able to counteract uneven surfaces that you may have to put your tripod on. So rather than sit and wrestle with your tripod until you get it perfectly balanced, which is wasting time when things could be happening that you need to capture, then you you just set your tripod up, loosen the ball head, balance the camera with it, boom, boom, boom. Now lock in your focus, hit record. A lot of times you have to sacrifice some things for speed because you you have to focus on what the goal is and the goal is telling the story of what happened that day. And I, I like to always imagine the clips of, parts of these clips being played in the background while two news anchors discuss what happened or there's a debate on television for a panel or something like that. But these kind of things play in the background. And a lot of times they just buy this footage straight from AP. But now you can go online and buy this footage from people like me. And actually, I'll t at the end of the video, I'll tell you what, where I sell the video, and how to sign up, and and you know you'll, you'll learn all that. But you need to get your art first. You got to know how to do. You need to know your camera settings so that you can set them up quickly. You need to really understand different focal lengths and what they do, and. And, you know, you need to understand the the mechanics of videography and how to get proper exposure, how to get proper white balance, things like that. Because you can't always trust your automatic camera. And that'll, that's the thing that sets some pro video from... It, pro video apart from amateur video. So when you've got all these things set on auto, when the lighting changes because you're moving or anything like that, then the, all that readjusts and it's, it's jarring to the eye. If you set your white balance, I usually use auto white balance settings, but it's not a constant changing auto white balance. I get it set for the lighting I have, boom. And you know, if I go and I, suddenly I'm in the shadows, then I go and I reset my white balance. As far as the, my color settings, I've got a C-Log imitation which is just a flattened color profile with reduced saturation and reduced contrast so that the difference between my highlights and the, the lightest parts and the darkest parts is not as great as if you had the contrast turned up. Now it results in a little bit flatter image, but that's easily corrected and balanced with other footage by adjusting the contrast and saturation in the production end which they're going to do anyway and so they will ask rather than you spend your time color correcting after the fact and then having to render your video out they'd rather go ahead and have the video raw in a format that they can use okay up here I'm approaching the spot where I entered there's a road up here to the right in between those buildings that goes straight into 
a locked down zone with there's no barricades. I thought that I, I ran into that issue you guys yesterday. Have a real serious gap right. You guys have a serious gap right here with this road wide open straight up into the zone that's behind the fences. I messed up yesterday because I got confused walking by and walked up there and suddenly I was in the no, forbidden zone had you know and was surrounded and ID'd and all that. But there's nothing that lets anybody know not to go up there. What, driving or walking? Walking. I mean, as soon as I got up there, I was surrounded by a bunch of people. I mean, it's, you know, it was a little frightening, but I mean, I wasn't doing anything illegal that I knew of. But I'm just saying, it just might be a good idea just to put a barrier or something, or a sign that says, don't come up here. Yeah, it's just, that's the sidewalk I use to go. I'm just, I mean, I'm not you know, trying to tell you guys how to do your job. Just that seems like a pretty wide open gap there. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I was explaining to the cop what had happened the, yesterday in this video. I had walked up that road and and was shooting video of that <laughs> same SWAT vehicle. I'm definitely not going up that way, for sure. So, yeah, I'm muttering to myself, yeah, I'm not going up that way because I had run into some issues yesterday. But I couldn't believe that after they dealt with me, who walked right up into their secure area and up to the point where they all started getting all freaked out and surrounded me with about 20 cops, that I couldn't believe that they hadn't put some sort of barrier or sign or something up today. And that just shocked me. And so I thought I'd let that Capitol Police guy know. I mean, I know he doesn't make those kind of decisions. They told him, you sit in this car right here today. And he was obviously young, looked like he was new. Wasn't trying to pick on the guy. So I was just letting him know maybe he'll mention it to somebody and somebody will mention it and they'll plug that hole in the security. You know. But yeah, that, that was my little run in. You might expect some run in with the police when you're doing this kind of thing just because, you know, they are still all suspicious of when you shoot video. In the larger cities, they pretty much know to leave the press alone when you're doing media work. But in the smaller towns especially, they get, you know, if you're shooting video of a police station or a, you know, power plant or anything like that, they get a little paranoid. So just be aware and always carry your ID. You don't want trouble. At this point, I've pretty much captured all the things I need to capture, and I'm just now walking back around to where I started to see if there's any angles from that side that I might add. And also, I end up running into a whole lot of other videographers and photographers who are sitting across the street waiting on something to happen that never did. And so I thought that was also part of the story, so I turned my camera and showed them a little bit. But first, a lot of walking. And I don't know if you can hear by my breathing, I've been walking a lot. And just because I'm in my 50s and a little overweight, that's, that's not the reason, I promise. <laughs> and believe it or not, I walked from downtown up to my home in Midtown, which is about two miles from here, once I was finished. But here I see that same SWAT vehicle that gave me the issues yesterday. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and shoot some more of them. Just, you know, this is me being snarky as much as it is actually capturing footage that's useful. There's those damn countdowns again. Six, five, four, three, four. 
I'm being very careful not to get in the street or on the grass or off the sidewalk. Because you never want to give any of the police any excuse to run you off. And there's another one of those uh, rubber bullet guns. There was already a lot of construction going on around the Georgia Capitol, which kind of ruined a lot of the shot aesthetically because these barriers were there before there was any trouble. That was all just because of the construction. And you can see the orange construction fencing that's all over the place. That's literally for the construction that was going on and all the massive landscaping that was happening around the Capitol before all this nonsense started. All right, here I'm trying to capture the personal human side of this. And this is, this actually becomes one of my favorite shots of the day. Because it's, it's two young National Guard soldiers called out to what they don't know. They don't know whether this is going to turn crazy. They just know that they have to be there. And fighting the boredom would also be a very hard thing to deal with. And having it be this much boredom on top of, I have to be ready at any moment if something goes down. Yeah, so I wanted to capture a little bit of the human uh, effort going on here. Beyond all the equipment and the armored personnel carriers and the buses and the police cars and the weapons there, there's a certain human story going on here too and this is just another angle of the same same two national guard soldiers where the, the red construction dumpster didn't really work with the story, although it made a great background as a contrast to their uniforms. This looks more like in place, although I don't think this shot is as aesthetically pleasing. Seven, 
I started to set up this shot because I wasn't sure what was going to happen when this black car, civilian looking cars, made it to the police checkpoint there. But the, the Department of Public Safety vehicle backed off and allowed them to pass, so I assume they were supposed to be there and were on their way out. But, you know, you turn the camera on just in case. And I'm sharing with you guys every shot I took on this day, not just the ones that are good. <laughs> At that point, my GoPro battery had died and I had to come over and swap it out. So that's where the quick interruption was right there. Well, now I'm next to all these press. You see all these people with cameras. There's so many more cameras than even possible protesters. And that's if you count those two guys who walk by with the flags and Flagman, even though he didn't seem like a protester as much as just out there to make some sort of statement or to take some pictures for some art. I don't know. <laughs> but I just thought I'd get my shots from this angle as I passed on by and basically I'm just kind of on my way out and I uh, just grabbing a few shots on the way by and this is when I start thinking you know these guys in the press are are really the story they're all sitting around waiting for something to happen that nothing happens and so I just kind of get up to the other side I think I get one more shot one or two more shots of the capital itself and then I just get my shots of the reporters <laughs> and I'm sitting here next to this Presbyterian church and there's a lot of homeless people who camp out in the little doorways there trying to shelter themselves from the wind and that's right across the street from the state capitol where some of the richest people in the state congregate I really like this one guy in the center there. He's carrying around a step stool so that he can drop that step stool at any time, unfold it, step up on it, and he's got you know, a two foot height advantage on anybody else trying to get some video in the crowd or photographs, whichever he's doing. This is why I noticed this guy with the press uh, bulletproof vest. He's got this vest on with the press on the back of it. So I thought I'll get a shot that's focused on him with everybody else is a little bit soft due to the depth of field. And that kind of this story, you can see the police in the distance and him shooting video of the Capitol it kind of tells the story of the afternoon there.
this is the point where I realized that the battery in the cannon has just about died, so knowing I have an extra, I just go ahead and swap that out before it all dies on me. Those are my little Osmo Pocket cameras from DJI. They have built-in gimbals so I can get smooth footage even when I'm running. I had those with me in case there was some trouble. I could continue to film while I was escaping the trouble. security fencing around the capital tells the story but it also makes the shots look bad <laughs> it's just like I said that's an aesthetics thing so I tried to incorporate them into the shots to make them provide information like this one it says state of Georgia on it it's a little blurry because I'm focused on the group behind it but just, you can tell that gives context to what you're looking at. That's state of Georgia, National Guard, Georgia State Patrol car, which anybody has driven in the state of Georgia would recognize the blue and silver. And once again, you have to get a wide shot and a close shot. And I try to maintain that state of Georgia inside the frame to give it context. Okay, at this point, I'm pretty much done. I've got all the shots I need. I'm just going to start heading back up towards the north side of the downtown area so that I can uh, get a ride back. And then as I'm walking, I notice this, the roads have been blocked off even further than this morning when I showed up. And so I decide, you know, it's a decent day, a little chilly, but I can handle it. I'm just going to go ahead and walk home. So I walk my entire route home a couple of miles. On the way, I get a few more shots looking back in. Just, But you can see these are the trucks at the from the beginning of the video. I started on just the other side of the hill. I mean, just the other side of those trucks I started. And I'm going to be back on that same, the same area opposite sidewalk. So I've completed an entire lap around the Capitol and an extra little side track down to that field where they were staging the buses. So I've already gotten a pretty good walk in and uh, I'm just gonna get a few parting shots as I'm going out.
you can never have too much coverage. And for a lot of clips, you'll submit them without sound. But this particular request, they wanted natural sound. And so I left the, the sound side in. A lot of times I'll render them out, all my clips together as one large file and upload the one single file. In that case, I usually turn off the audio unless they've requested natural sound. In this shot, I'm having a hard time getting the uh, camera to focus so far away. And every slight little bump or vibration, I'm technically kind of on a bridge right here. And anything that vibrates the camera is just throwing the autofocus out of loop. So I just, I recognize the shot's not going well. I turn it off. And I change the autofocus from constant autofocus to just stay focused right here no matter what happens and just let it maintain its focus from the start At this point, I'm wanting to get a couple more shots down the street that show the trucks and then the, where the street is blocked off on the other side. So I'm going to move up the hill a little bit on this, on this bridge and get those shots, and then I'm done. At that point, I was checking what time it was and checking to see if my wife was still at her job or was home to come give me her ride home. <laughs> but like I said, I started walking up here and you can't see it in the camera, but because it's such a wide angle, it looks so far away. But eventually I get up towards the top and you can see just over the hill, they've the Georgia State university police have the road blocked off she she wouldn't have been able to come down this far and get me anyway and once i started walking i just just yeah i'll just walk on home it looks so far away on the gopro <laughs> but then I'm zoomed in at 250 millimeters. And it's a lot closer. Once again, having to hold the strap so that the wind doesn't move the camera. The strap just acts like a sail, captures the wind and pulls on the camera and it's just, it's never a good thing.
And there's the final shot of the day. Not a very good one. And there we go, I'm done. I'm ready. All left to do is pack up everything and walk home. And so basically, here's a summary of uh, how to do this thing. The most important thing to keep in mind is to remember that you're there to tell a story. But you're not inventing a story. But you have to think about what the story is. Today's story was that the protesters failed to show up although the state of Georgia both with the National Guard military police and the Georgia State Patrol were more than ready if they did. The other side story that developed was that there was also a ton of press there waiting for something to happen. And so I captured those things. I went out and I said, hey, let's look at the extra security they've built up. That's the story. Let's look at all the extra security standing around being bored because nobody showed up. That's the story. Let's also show that all these media and press are standing around with nothing really to shoot and nothing really happening to report. That's also part of the story. And so you need to make sure you focus what you capture on the story that's happening. Then the next thing you got to focus on is you need to be lightweight. I can, you see, I can fold all the things, camera, tripod, everything into one backpack and, and I'm lightweight and mobile. Use a camera with autofocus. You need a camera that can quickly autofocus and you're not spending a whole lot of time wrestling with focus. You're outside a lot of times. You don't have uh, s consistent lighting. You can't see those little LCD screens and they will lie to you. If it's really bright outside, you'll think, oh, this shot's too dark because it's showing up dark on your screen and you'll overexpose. You gotta remember that kind of thing. Remember to make your clips 30 seconds long so they can have plenty of tail on both sides. Remember to get a medium and a wide at the very least. Maybe even a medium, a wide, and a close-up, or a wide angle and a close-up, medium and a close-up, a variety of angles that's necessary. And don't worry about making the absolute most gorgeous shot. You're trying to convey information. And always keep in mind how your video will be used. It's going to be running in a loop behind some talking heads. That's the way I usually think about it, and that seems to solve most of my problems. Okay, as promised, I told you I'd let you know how to do this yourself. You just need to go to www.stringer.com. That's S-T-R-I-N-G-R, -R, no E. Stringer.com and sign up or download the app from the Play Store or from uh, Apple's App Store. Just search for Stringer without the E, S-T-R-I-N-G-R. Download the app, follow the instructions. It'll know where you are based on your phone's GPS. So it'll send you assignments based on your location. So say you're in Detroit and something happens in Detroit, they'll they'll send you a little notification and you can look at it and go, oh, there's a fire going on 12 blocks from here. You go over and you film the fire and you send in the video and you get paid. It's just that simple. All you need is PayPal. Okay, that's all for me. Thanks for listening and watching. I hope you learned something. I had fun making it. Bye-bye.